Hello everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, March 18th. I'm one of the co-moderators, Lori Moffat, along with other moderators, Peggy George, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks to Tammy for doing closed captioning for us. Our topic today is engaging students' parents in the modern classroom with our special guests, Laura Briggs and Horatio Ochoa. I'm going to turn the mic over to Peg Wallach, who will introduce Laura and Horatio and ask them the newbie question. OK, thank you. Well, we are very excited to welcome Laura Briggs and Horatio Ochoa today to share Blooms with us, a great tool for parent communication. One of our Classroom 2.0 Live Advisory Team members, Susie Higley, told us about them, and she enthusiastically reminded, recommended that we bring them on to one of our shows to share it with all of you. Laura was a previous presenter for us on a webinar about Minecraft. Laura has been a teacher in grades K through 5 and a technology research teacher, resource teacher who is currently a first grade teacher. She has also served on the ISTE Mobile Learning Network as president, PD chair, and communications chair, and on the ISTE Games and Simulations Network as an officer. She works as an online course designer facilitator for the ETLO North Tier Consortium and as a Star Summer STEM Camp Director. Horatio Ochoa is the Growth Manager for Blooms and has responsibilities that include all areas of marketing, from consumer insights to developing marketing plans and executing in all relevant channels, advertising, content marketing, community building, influencer marketing, public relations, events, and more. So welcome, Laura and Horatio. We are so happy to have you here with us today. I'm going to ask you our newbie question, and then you can take over with your presentation. So the newbie question, what is effective homeschool communication, and how has it changed over the years? OK, thank you so much. Effective homeschool communication is really meeting parents where they are and helping them become more engaged in their child's education. In helping classroom communication be easy for parents and all in one place contributes to parents' level of comfort in developing a relationship with the school and the teacher. And using tools that increase parent-teacher communication and involvement definitely increases student achievement. And Horatio, would you like to talk a little bit about how parent communication has changed over time? Sure. Um, and thank you very much for, for having us here. We're really excited to be a part of this webinar. Um, I believe that you know, uh, when it comes to communication um, with parents, uh, for the past however many years, um, you know, many teachers have relied on um, old methods of communication, like the paper in the back is the most common one. And, and that's very, still very much used across the board. Um, email has um, already introduced, has been introduced as a method of communication. And, and now even some teachers are um, texting parents from their personal cell phone number. And I think, um, you know, as much as, you know, some of these new technologies have been introduced, um, there, there's still a lot of uh, reliance on, on the old methods of communication, whether that's the paper on the back or, or even the phone. Um, and I think now more and more parents, particularly as it comes to as it relates to uh, millennial parents that have grown with uh, their cell phone number, uh, their cell phone as a means of communication, more and more they're willing in get, trying to get uh, communication in that in that phone, and so I think um, as as they are uh, you know getting into the into the school, um, they want to rely more on on their cell phone um, to communicate, and so I think that's how it, it it is evolving, and I think more and more we'll see that communication moving on to onto cell phones.
Great. Um, so uh, we're going to start with the uh, with the presentation. And um, again, thank you very much for having us um, here in the webinar. Uh, we're really excited. Um, as uh, we were already introduced, my name is Horacio Choa, and uh, Laura, uh, who's uh, also helping us out. I'm going to do a very quick introduction um, for Blooms and how we uh, came about and what is that we really care about and kind of a quick overview of, of uh, our product and, and our company. Uh, but more importantly, I think I want to leave some time for Laura to do a demonstration of how um, she has used Blooms in her classroom and, and really be that um, the core part of the presentation. So you guys can, um, you know, get familiar with with the product. I'll get started then. Um, with Blooms, we really are all about parental engagement. Parental engagement is the reason why uh, we came about. We care about parents getting more engaged in their kids' education, and the reason we we care about that is because there is a lot of research that supports the idea that parental engagement is a really important piece in, in a kid's um, development and education. Uh, there's a lot of research that supports the idea that the more parents are engaged with their kids' education, the better those kids will do, not only in school, which is uh, very clear they get higher grades, uh, better school attendance, but just in life in general. They also, um, you know, they get less, less trouble. Um, they use less um, drugs and alcohol and, and, and other benefits. Uh, but really, you know, what we see is that the more parents are engaged with their kids' education, the better they will do. And, and that's really what we want to do. We want to make sure that parents are engaged um, with their kids' education. Now, however, this has been um, published and, and this research has been out there for, for a few years. Um, mm -hmm. There are many um, challenges with getting parents involved. And, you know, they, parents are certainly willing to get involved in their, in their kids' education, but sometimes they just don't know how to, or sometimes they're intimidated with, um, you know, approaching school in, in having those conversations with, with educators. On the school side, um, you know, they, they want parents to get involved, but sometimes, you know, they, traditional methods of communication have created islands of information, and whether that's the PTA or, um, you know, communications via um, uh, voice messaging or email communications, these are somewhat islands that live on separate um, places, and so they don't really uh, foster that communication between the, the educators and the parents. And for teachers, you know, that has left teachers with trying to solve for that communication with parents. And unfortunately, you know, there are so many tools available out there that um, sometimes teacher, teachers have to juggle all among with all these different communications. So uh, whether they're using, as I was saying, you know, the paper in the bag or email or texting parents with their personal cell phone number um, or even, you know, using Facebook and Twitter and some of these new tools, uh, the problem is that they are all islands, again, of communication and the teacher really has to juggle all of them at the same time. And, and for many of them, it's, it's just not an efficient and an effective way to communicate with parents. And that's how we, uh, Blooms came about. Um, really, the idea of Blooms is to put all the tools that the teachers need to communicate with parents in one place through a one easy-to-use app. And whether that communication involves, um, you know, sending quick communications or updates uh, from the classroom to the parents, or um, creating um, events and having parents participate in those events through volunteer um, opportunities or with parent-teacher conferences, or even sending communications about the student's behavior and the work that they have been doing in the classroom. 
again, the idea is to consolidate all that communication that has to happen between the school and the parents um, in one place. But we also want to do it in a way that it's not one more thing for the teachers to do, that it's not a burden for them to do just one other tool that they need to use to communicate with parents. So we try to provide all of the tools that, they're, uh, that they will need in just one place. And it does it whether it's via email, um, uh, via text message, everything you need to do is just post it to your Bloom's classroom and it distributes it to the parents. And also for the parents, we didn't want to make it difficult um, for them to learn something new. So we made it intentional, uh, intentionally look a little bit like Facebook because nowadays, as I was mentioning before, parents are very, very familiar with Facebook. They're, you know, they're using it all the time. They're using their phones all the time. And so that way, parents don't need to learn something new to start using this, to start using Blooms and start um, really participating in, uh, in their kids' education. And so we create all these opportunities to connect with the parents and for the parents to connect with the teachers, but also for the parents to participate in the education of their kids, whether that is by attending um, parent-teacher conferences or even taking um, opportunity, volunteer opportunities and, and really attending school events and, and being a part of, of them. And, and all that, again, from one place. So the way we think about it is we really look at three pillars of parenting uh, involved, parent, parental involvement. Um, first is just connecting, making those connections between educators and parents, and you know that's through some of the some of the features that we provide for that is just uh, quick updates from the classroom or sharing video, uh, photos and video uh, through the app, but also sending alerts and notifications to the parents. So, for instance, if if someone needs to um, send an urgent message home, you know we do it through the app and we we send it um, both to their phone and to their email address, so it's more likely to be seen. Um, but also, you know, we let parents choose what their best method of notification is, whether they want to be notified via email or via text message or via uh, the app, then they have that flexibility to choose and, and make sure that they are receiving in, in, in the way that they, um, they are best connected. We also provide uh, means of communication, whether that's through sort of two-way messaging, and you can message parents uh, you know, one to one or one to many, but also you can you can send home um, some of the work that the kid has been doing through student portfolios, and you know Laura will will demonstrate um, later down the road how some of these uh, tools work. But the idea is that if you uh, from the classroom you want to send home uh, instead of sending the paper in the bag with the with the latest um, work that they did. The teacher can just take a picture and put it on Blooms and send it, and it creates a student portfolio that grow, um, grows over time. And then the parent now can um, compile all this work in one place, and they can see how it evolves over the year. Just like that with behavior management, um, you know, the teacher can um, send home notes about the, the student's behavior, and it's much easier now for parents to, to have that conversation at home when the kids come back and say, you know, how did it go at school? Now the parent knows exactly how it went at, at school. And they know, um, you know, they can get the communication from the teacher and, you know, whether they behave, behave well or there, if there was an issue at, at, the, at the school, they will know that in real time. And then the third pillar is really about coordination and enabling those um, First, to have a common calendar of events and, and that having the parent be aware of all the events at the school um, and then participate in those, um, as I was saying, through volunteer opportunities or even participating in, in parent-teacher conferences. So again, all of these communi uh, communication means are in one place uh, that it really is, is designed to get parents more involved in, in the kids' education. 
So you can see that with all these tools that we offer inside Blooms, we are really replacing many of the old method, methods of communication that we, we talked about, whether it's the flyer um, or handouts that are going inside the bag, um, the school directory, and you know, you always have the, the book with the list of all the, the students' parents, and now you have to browse. And with Blooms, you, you don't do that. You basically have everything in one place. And you don't need to be doing text messages from the teacher's personal cell phone number. Uh, parents can receive text notifications without even knowing what the teacher's um, personal uh, number is. And you know, all these tools, even social media, because now that the app is, in, is is set up in a way that um, they can connect with teachers, they can connect with other parents if the teacher um, wants to allow that. And again, it's all these different. Uh, methods that the teacher was using before are now in just one place. And the end result, which is really important for us, again, we wanted to do this in a way that uh, it wasn't a burden on teachers. And the end result that we've seen, as, as we see uh, on these three examples from teachers that have posted on, on their Facebook profile, they posted this image. Uh, that we provided them with with the uh, activities that they've done inside Blooms. Um, really, the end result is that teachers are saving a lot of time by using Blooms. Why? Because they don't they don't have to be creating all these different communications, whether you know the paper on the back or or the email. Now they, they just basically grab their phone, enter a message home that they are going to send home, send it. And that saved them just the time that they had to go into the computer and log into their email account and type all the, the, the message. Now they can do it just very quickly in a very easy way. And same thing with all these other things that they're doing, whether it's um, you know creating volunteer opportunities, um, signing up for parent-teacher conferences. In the end, what it, what it results on is that they're saving hours and hours in, in time that they were before using to you know communicate with parents, now they can dedicate to um, create the lessons or dedicate more time or even for personal time, right? Because sometimes that's what they need, just a little more personal time. And again, some kind of the end result that we're really proud of is that we have developed a very engaged um, base of, of teachers that are loving the product. And all the feedback that we're getting is, um, is that they love Blooms because it makes their life easier, because it's saving um, a lot of time, or because even they're seeing how their parents are um, more engaged and more participative in, in, in their kids' education. And so these are actually real quotes from teachers that have um, gone the extra mile and posted uh, in in a blog or in social media um, their love for for the app and and it's not just because we you know we're saying it it's because teachers are saying it out there and the good thing is that parents are also loving the the communication via looms um, these are again real quotes from parents that we picked from um, from social media. And, and the idea is that parents are loving it because now they feel that they are actually connected with with the school. They're seeing that um, you know they're getting all these notifications from the teacher. They know that um, what's happening in, uh, at school in, in a world that was so distant before from uh, from the parents. Now they get a really a window into the into what's happening in the school. And you know again. Something we're really proud of is, is, you know, it's not only the recognition on the educator side, on the parent side, but the industry in general is is showing that, you know, we're trying to change things. We're we're here to make uh, to make a difference. So we receive, uh, you know, different awards from from different institutions, from Tech and Learning to EdTech Digest um, to the American um, Association of, of Librarians. Um, so again, we're trying here to make a difference, and we're really, really proud that uh, people are taking notice. And we're doing all this uh, really in a private and secure way. So we're 
there are many ways that we're trying to make sure that our app is uh, is secure, it's private, uh, and we do it in different ways. Whether it's because we it's a, an invitation only network, so the teacher is always in control of who's looking at the information. They have administrator controls of their classroom, and so they send the invitations home to the parents. Um, they are there. They can see you know who's in the classroom, and they can. If, if there's if someone leaves the school, they can uh, remove them from the classroom. Um, they can remove communications if, if they don't want them. Um, we also um, verify that you know the, the people that are joining are the people that the teacher wanted to invite. And there are different controls for for the teacher, as I was saying, to to make sure that uh, the communication is only to the people that needs it. And these um, same tools are at the school level. So um, the school has administered, or the school administrator has administrator rights also for all the classrooms that live inside uh, blooms inside the school. And I, um, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but um, our app is is really in everywhere. Um, so whether you're using your desktop and you don't want to use your smartphone or you don't want your teachers to, to use a smartphone, they can use just the, the, uh, the school computer through the browser and, and do everything in, in their computer. Or if you have an iPad in your classroom or you uh, allow your teachers to, to use their, their phone number, they can also do it through the app. It really is, um, is pervasive. It's, it's everywhere, in whether it's an iOS, um, Android devices, or like I said, in Windows and, and through the browser, um, we uh, the app is, is everywhere. And with that, um, I'm gonna pass the um, baton to uh, Laura so she can talk a little bit more about how she uses it in, in in the classroom and do a quick demo. Thank you so much, Horatio. That was a really, really great um, overview of Blooms and many of the different characteristics and opportunities that teachers and parents have in changing the way they communicate. And what we're going to do today is we're actually going to let you all log in to our specially created class called Classroom 2.0 Live. And we'll actually let you see some of the demos. Um, I will do a demonstration here, but then we also want you to have an interactive role where you actually participate in doing something in the app. And you can download the app on your device, or you can actually log in on your computer in another window um, if you're using your desktop or laptop um, or your tablet, because it works with, with any browser. And so the website, if you're going to go to that, is blooms.net and if you're downloading it on your device you can just go to your marketplace store the app store and search for blooms and download that um, pretty quickly here and then you can actually create an account with an email address and you set a password for that and once you get into that and we'll surely give everyone a few minutes to do this you will actually Here's our directions here, and it gives us the rest of the directions for what to do to actually get into our Classroom 2.0 Live Classroom in Blooms. And so this is what you will do, and you can follow these directions here on the screen. And this is the code here at the bottom. And each class, when a teacher or administrator creates a class, gives a class access code, okay? and the class access code can be put in manually, like we're doing now. Um, a teacher can also invite parents by email, which will directly send them an email message where they just click to access the class. And the way we're doing it today is through the class access code. So if you all can take a few minutes and do that, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about while we're um, catching everyone up and getting the app or logging into it, um, just a little bit about communicating with posts and comments. So that's going to be one of our first interactive activities. And I think when you are finished downloading or creating your account and getting into the class, 
if you can please raise your hand um, in the chat area, in the main room, and then we'll know about when everyone is completed with that. And we'll just take a few more minutes um, to do that. And definitely please let us know if you have questions as we go. You can be a teacher, please. And yes, Peggy got a head start because we set hers up earlier this morning. So she is ready to go. And um, Peggy is also going to be the administrator um, of this class in Blues. And the class will continue. So we're hoping that um, maybe she and I will get together and think of some ways that Classroom 2.0 Live can use the app in communicating with you as teachers and educators. And that's another use for Blooms, um, for which I use it for in addition to um, using it with my classroom, is for staff development. And for example, schools could have a whole class set up for their staff, for staff communication. So you would have a staff calendar, you would have you could have appointments in there. You would have posts about information. You could be sharing resources, links, photos, videos. And that could just be for a school staff. Uh, we've also used the app at several educational technology conferences where we actually open it up to the public and have educators join the group for the conference and share resources they found at the conference. They can share pictures of themselves doing fun things at the conference, um, presentation information um, from presenters, um, their materials and presentation files and things like that. So many, many different uses um, for Blooms. And actually, um, several of the new functionalities that have just been released is using Blooms for daycare. Um, and I, I had to giggle when I saw the little pictures um, because you know younger students need more different types of data and things to be reported to the parents. And there's information for when they had a bottle, when they had a diaper change, when they were doing different activities in the classroom. So it's all geared to the daycare setting. Um, we also actually just came out with the Scout Troop functionality in Blooms. So that's for Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, um, other troops. And um, soon, I think, the sporting part of Blooms will come out for different sports teams. And there are many, many other uses for Blooms, needless to say. So let me check my hands and see um, how we're doing. And so I think we are almost ready. And we are going to start with, let's see. I will actually show my screen live. And we're hoping that um, this will hold. Um, if I pop out for a moment, don't worry, because I'll be popping right back in. Um, so that our test went really well yesterday. And I thank you for doing that. And so I'm going to be showing the web version. I have my phone going as well. Um, right next to me just in case, but um, I'll be showing the demonstration um, in the web version. And so here we go. And so here we are in our Classroom Room 2.0 Live class. And what Blooms enables you to do when you set up your class as a teacher or administrator for your school is that you can choose the colors, you can choose your background graphics, your little mascot graphic, etc. And just to let you know some of the areas of the screen here, this is our main left navigation area, which lists all your classes. It lists your, the daycare rooms. It lists your troops that you have. And Blooms also has groups that can be made if they're not classrooms. So for example, the groups could be different activities, different organizations that don't need a parent-teacher conference. 
because really the only difference between a classroom and a group is that the group does not have the feature of the parent-teacher conference, um, but everything else is the same. Ours we set up as a classroom just so you could see an example of the parent-teacher conference. And so our first activity is for everyone to scroll down and post a comment on our initial welcome post. And so we definitely want to welcome everyone. And when you post, all you would do is click on comment. And then at the bottom down here is where you would click a comment. Oh, yes, I see Paula has already put a comment in. Oh, fabulous. People are getting into the app. And for example, this is what parents can do. Um, if you put a photo up, if you put up a announcement or um, another posting, parents can like by clicking the little heart, and parents can also post a comment. Now, if there is something that the teacher or administrator does not want there to be any comments for, then there's an option when creating that comment to turn off the comment. So if you just want to send out you know, something that is just outgoing, then that opportunity is there. And that would all show up in the middle feed area there um, of your app. For this other side over here is your private messages. And as you can see, I have a ton of them from, you know, from parents to um, colleagues and um, all different types of um, you know, private messages going on there. And when you're in the app, the really cool thing about the newest version of the app is you swipe between these different areas. So you swipe right and you get your messages, or you swipe left and you get your left navigation. Um, so it's really easy to um, navigate um, around the app as well. So let's see, we have three people have viewed this, so we know there's at least three of us in there. Oh, yes, we have two Horatio's here. Ooh. And Paula can add her picture a little bit later on when she gets a chance. That would be in her profile. And so you can see how easy it is to add a comment. And I'm just going to click the back arrow. And to create a post, the Create button is right at the top. I want to interrupt you just for a second, just to clarify something. Um, when people are posting their comments, do one of us have to approve the comment before the others can see it? Because they're not seeing like them right now. Um, let me double check something. Um, I'm pretty sure they should be able to see them. And Oh, Lori just sent a private message too. Fabulous. Um, let's see. You don't need to approve them. Uh, what's happening, what is probably happening to you is that uh, you need to refresh the browser maybe um, okay. for the comments to, to show up. Okay, thanks. Go right ahead. And so if you need to refresh, then just either refresh your web browser or pull down from the top if you're using the app. And that will refresh um, the feed that everyone um, is seeing. I was thinking mine was updating live because I was seeing um, Paula's comments as well as her ratios there. And you can always go back and click the comments area to get into that post and then just scroll down and you'll be able to see um, what the comments are. And if you're still working on posting your comment, um, you know, then please continue. That would be great. And we'll go on to our next um, demonstration and interactive activity, which is the calendar. And if you can see, this menu here gives us a really easy way to get to different features. And so for calendar, there are different ways that a teacher or administrator can post. And you can post within Blooms itself. Or you can also actually import from your Google Calendar right into Blooms. And so right now, I don't have any events there. But just to show you how easy it is, is all we're going to do, so say, for example, I click the plus sign, I give it a title, and I could give it a location. I could add notes in there. Um, and actually, let's call this, let's change this event to party. 
So we're having a classroom party. It's going to be in room five. And I could write something about the party, what it is, what it's for, um, et cetera. And then I could set the times down below here. And definitely not an all-day party in the classroom. Students would like that for sure. And there are repeating things. So say, for example, if you're setting up volunteers, you're setting up other things that repeat, you can also um, set that. And you can also set an RSVP or not. Um, and you can also invite. Um, and you could pick certain members um, of your class to invite. And here's, look at this. Woo, we have a great list so far. We have, let's look at all those members we have in our class. So there are many, many different members um, in our class there. So that is fabulous. That, that's a great thing. Glad it's working. Um, very easy um, to do, I hope. Um, easy for our parents as well. And so that's the way you would set up an event. And you can also, in this area, if there is a need for volunteers or a need for items, you can set that along with the event. So say, for example, we need to have some food supplies. So I'm going to do need items. And I'm going to enter the items really quickly here. We're going to have Sundays. So I'm going to say bananas. And we need, we have a big class. So we're going to do five, no, hold on, five. <laughs> five bunches of bananas. And you could change what date it was due. So, for example, if you wanted these the day before the party, you could change that date. Okay? And you could change this whole thing by tracking it. Um, and let's do another. We need sprinkles. And let's just say we need two little containers of those. And need an item. And we need bowls. And let's just say we need two of those. And so you can see how quickly um, this is going to get this set up. Um, we need ice cream, of course. And I could do this with chocolate or vanilla, you know, however you want to, to break that down. Um, if you have allergies in your class, but sure, you know, we always check for that first. And Ah, syrup. Yes, we definitely need some syrup. Chocolate syrup, especially. And we'll just get one of those. And that's good enough for now. And so what we'll do is I'm going to save that. And what it's going to show is an event on your screen. And it's going to also have those supplies listed for you to sign up. So once you see that, go ahead, and this is just fictitious, of course, um, go ahead and sign up to bring something. Um, let's give it a try. And also, this will notify members. And what it means by that is it will send a notification. So if you're using your device, it will pop up a little red badge to say you have a notification waiting. Um, it will also send an email message. Um, and someone had asked earlier in one of the questions, um, if the parent doesn't have the app or whatever, will they still be able to get the information? And yes, um, even if a parent doesn't join the class um, for whatever reason, if the teacher adds them or invites them by email, then the parent will still receive the information in email. Now, it's not as interactive as when using the app or the web. Um, the app is actually the most interactive. And for example, the parent would get the email with, say, a photo. And it's going to be a real small version of the photo. They're not really going to be able to see it, you know, in large version um, or zoom in, zoom out kind of thing. Um, if they received this supply request, they would not be able to sign up in just email. Um, so really the app is the most interactive um, for doing parent conferences and also doing the sign-ups for supplies. I'll say notify just so you can get an example of that. And it should be coming to you now. Let's see if it came. You might need to refresh.
and I'm hoping that comes in. Because what you would do is you would just click on the need items, and it should look like this. So if you pick sign up, it's going to let you choose how many can you bring. And please do this only bring one so we have enough for everyone to try to sign up. And then if you want a reminder, it's going to ask you that. If you want to send a comment back to the teacher, um, you could add in something there and then just click sign up. Um, teachers really love when the parent-teacher conferences are set up this way because, I mean, even when I set my parent-teacher conferences up, within, oh, I don't even know, not, not even within a half an hour, I already had half of the class signed up and no paper went home, no paper got lost in the backpack. Um, you know, a parent wasn't wondering when was their conference time, um, you know, and the conferences also will send a reminder as well, just like this sign up does, and it's just very, very easy to do. Um, I'll cancel this. We have enough things for others to sign up for. And let's see, I'm going to refresh so we can see if anyone has signed up yet. Aha, I think someone has because I have four. Little notifications there. Oh, yes, look, we only need four left. So we have, check this, Horatio signed up, Peg signed up, Lori and Paula have signed up. So you can see the names of the parents, and these are teachers as you logged in, but in our list here, um, who has signed up, they'll get a reminder of that um, for when that item is due. Um, if it was a parent conference sign up, it looks very similar and the parent will get a reminder of that time as well. Um, and interestingly, I did not have, when I was um, scheduling my parent-teacher conferences and actually holding them, all parents arrived on their designated day and time. Um, I had no one call me or email me to say, oh, I forgot my time, I wasn't sure. So having this handy right in their phone or their computer and being able to have it you know, conveniently with them being right in the app, you know, saved us all time and gave us all the reminders um, we needed for our communication. Now, I want to show timelines really fast and I'll jump into another one of my um, classes here. And I think this is the one. And let's go down. I'm going to go to, let's see timelines right here, and we're not going to actually post something today, I just want to show you what it looks like. You would get a list of your students as a teacher, and parents would be associated with the students. Um, so they would be the ones who would be able to see the timeline item after the teacher has approved it. Um, so I think maybe Peggy asked, would people's comments be approved before they go in? And no, comments are not. But if something inappropriate is posted, um, the teacher has total control and would be able to delete the comment, um, even remove that member um, from the class as well. Um, and there'll be, you know, other kinds of things that would need to happen if there was something you know, really inappropriate, you know, getting the administrator involved, um, et cetera. So we're going to show um, some items on the portfolio. And here we are. So this is, for example, these are examples that a student actually did. Um, this one is a counting coins activity um, in another app. So the student was actually able to do the activity, follow those directions, take a snapshot of the screen, and enter that into Blooms, which then it came to me for approval, and then I was able to put some comments on it, put a heart on it for liking it, and um, the student and the parent will be able to see that. And here are just some other examples. A couple more coin examples there. And this one is one where um, the recording is not here right at this moment, but this was the life cycle of the butterfly. So they actually made this in paper, took a photo of it, and then they recorded, and you can see their little annotations here also, as they were talking about the different stages of the butterfly, they circled the area they were talking about. So then I could assess, do they understand the vocabulary, do they understand the process, and are, you know, are they comprehending what is going on you know, in this life cycle? And so that was another example for science. Here's another one for math with time. This was also done in another app, and we call that app smashing. 
sometimes where you're using several different apps at the same time and then you um, put them into blooms. Here's one of one of their center activities. They were making um, short vowel words and they took a picture of what they were actually working on. Here's one that we did in a drawing program where they were labeling parts of the flower. And we could also do a recording on this also for them to explain how the flower grows. And this one's a really good one for assessment. Um, and this is with um, primary grades. These are sight words. And students just took a picture of our sight word card. And then they would record themselves reading the words. So if they didn't know one, we always said just to circle it. So then when their parents actually saw that video, they could help them practice those words um, that they missed. This was another good one for recording, practicing counting by fives to 100. So I didn't have to call over all the students you know, to my table and say, OK, we're going to practice counting by fives now so I could do an assessment. They did it right on Blooms, and I was able to use that as the assessment um, you know, for the end of the quarter, halfway through the year, um, whatever have you. And it saved us a lot of time in the class because they could do this at center time. And when I was already meeting with groups you know, in the small um, group setting. Here's another one where they did, this is part of their journal. And so they drew their picture, and they um, took a picture of it, and then they even like to record it and add some wording to it. So they were um, you know, writing one sentence, but they, we said they needed to continue the story with at least you know, a couple more comments. Um, and they could do that with the recording. Another math example. And here's one, a retelling of the Hungry Caterpillar story. So as you can see, a lot of examples and a lot of different ways that the students can put up items and show what they're learning and really demonstrate um, how they're learning and what they're learning and what they're thinking is. And um, let's see, I'm going to really quickly go to um, behavior to show you what that looks like. And these are the students in the class. And as they earn points, their plant grows. And the teacher can set custom goals for the whole class, for the students. The teacher can set up teams. And the students can also see how their plants are growing. Parents see that. Parents see the rewards that they get when their whole flower is totally grown and there's confetti thrown everywhere. And it's like, yay, they got to their, um, their amount of points that was their goal. And the teacher has total control over these options. Um, some teachers only use it as teams. Some teachers use it um, in conjunction with their PBIS major plan. And so a lot of different options that teachers can incorporate um, with the behavior management plan as well. And they love getting these flowers. I mean, they're just trying to get their flowers and, and getting their leaves to grow. You know, it's, it's, you know, they're always like, what do I have now? What do I have now? Um, you know, so the students get very excited and motivated over you know, having their flowers grow. While we're here, just briefly, you can also take attendance um, in Blooms as well. And it does not send directly to your student information system, um, but that's something that may be a future feature as well. And I think um, I was not able to see the um, chat going on, so I'm sure there are a bunch of questions. Um, so I will end our demo now. But please do um, let us know how things are going if you decide to make a class in Bloom. Also, with your school, your administrator can apply to get a school community for Blooms. And then that gives the administrator oversight into all the classes. and also has other ways to contact the whole school. PTAs can be involved um, in that school community as well. And um, it just really streamlines the school communication um, as well as classroom communication. And teachers can, by all means, just create their own class here. And it's free for schools and free for classrooms and free for daycare and for scouts and anyone who would like to use it as well. Um, we've even heard that Blooms have been used at colleges as well, at universities. So that's pretty cool, too. And let's see, I think I'm going to be turning it over to the next moderator to, um, to finish our webinar for today. Thanks so much, Laura and Horatio. Um, I did capture some questions. A few have been answered as we've gone along.
Laura, please explain further about student accounts and how they log in with QR codes. What if they don't have a mobile device to use a QR code? Okay. Um, for example, when the student logs in, the teacher can post a poster of the QR code um, on their wall. They can have them um, scan it from another device, um, from the teacher's device, um, whichever way is most convenient. And they have to have a device to use Bloom. So they have mm -hmm. to be using a computer or a device. And so you know, that's the way that the student logs in. Now, devices can be shared where you know, one student, say if it was um, you know, center time when there were multiple things going on in the room, the student, one student could log in and post their item and then do their recording or whatever, pass that device on to the next student. Then they log mm -hmm. in under their name with a QR code and post up their um, item as well. So it works with multiple devices, with only a few devices, or even with one device. Um, it would work. But we definitely need the um, device or the computer. Great. Um, you already explained about teacher or parents not joining Blooms um, and how they would use that with an email. Um, and I think your demonstration answered this one. Is there a way for a parent to combine multiple groups in their account, like school, teacher, Boy Scouts, clubs? And you did have multiple groups there. Um, so that's possible, correct? Absolutely. Um, a teacher can have, um, or a parent could have multiple students. So one student's in fifth grade, one student's mm -hmm. in first grade, you know, whichever way they need to do it, they can have their, their Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts in there. So just how you saw that large list of um, groups and classes in my navigation panel, um, that's the same way a parent could do as well for multiple classes and groups. Okay, great. Uh, you also answered this one. If there's only one iPad or smartphone in the class, that is the teachers, that can be used to take a photo of the work so the student can then post it to Blooms? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, does anyone else have a question for Laura? How do students get that photo from the teacher to upload to Blooms? So if, they, if the teacher's phone was used to take a photo of work, how would the student then get that photo? They'd probably have to use the teacher's phone. That would be the easiest, yes. Yeah. Um, the, student, the teacher would just log out and then mm -hmm. have the student log in. And they would have to have the QR code you know, on a poster on the wall or um, right. I even had someone in the middle of each table, so it was always mm -hmm. easily accessible for the students. And then the student would just scan that code. Um, and there's a scanner inside the app. So it's not like they have to use a separate QR code scanner um, app mm -hmm. or anything like that. And then they would just pick their name and post their item, do their recording or whatever, and um, it would show up in the It would show up on their timeline that way. Yes. Good. Uh, do you have just one group for your professional learning, or can you have subgroups for different topics? You can have as many as you need, Peggy, on there. Um, so for example, the um, Classroom 2.0 group is actually a class. And um, to make a subgroup is going to make a whole separate group. Um, but you can do that. It's, they're not limited. So you can make a group and then choose who those members would be. Um, so for example, if you wanted to just make a moderator group, for example, um, you could do that. Um, and they would have that group and the main group um, in their left navigation panel. Um, but it's not limited on how many classrooms and groups that one could make. Um, we, you know, like we mentioned about the scouts and the sports groups, there are you know, church groups and clubs and um, other places where people 
um, have you know groups at their work, for example, parents that are in a carpool want to you know keep in touch or whatever. You know, many many reasons and um, ideas for using Looms. And then they would get new notifications when there are new posts to that group. Yes, they could. Um, there is a notification preference panel that um, can be um, set, and there are all different types of notifications. So if mm -hmm. a parent does not want to receive the emails because they might prefer just to look at it in the app, then they can turn off the option for receiving email um, mm -hmm. in the app. They could, um, you know, there's a way to get a digest. Um, so there are many different options for setting the notifications, you know, according to the individual preference. Wonderful. Those were the questions that I saw and uh, then also appeared in chat as we were speaking. Thanks so much, Laura and Horatio, for uh, presenting to us. It sounds like this is a wonderful all-in-one app for teachers. Yeah, I'm getting that too, Paula. Uh, a little pop sound when someone posts a new comment when the app's open. Yep. Yeah, Laura mentioned the school account sign up. That that's that's possible uh, through the administration. Yeah, what happens when the app isn't open? Do they then um, accumulate? One of the cool um, features in Bloom, which is also a new feature, is called quiet hours. Because you know how like teachers may not want to be disturbed on the weekend or during certain hours in the evening. And a teacher can set the quiet hours that so will send a message to the parent. Well, you can send this private message, but the teacher may not see it until you know they log back on at another time. And so even if your app is not open, Everything that always comes to you is going to be saved. Um, it'll either appear in your feed or your private messages will appear in that private message area. And so mm -hmm. nothing is lost when you're not, you know, looking at your app. You know, it's all there. But when you take the time to go into it um, and see what is on the feed and if you've received any messages or events or um, photos and things like that. Terrific. Again, thanks so much. And we'll start with the wrap up. I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will tell us about what's coming up next. Thank you so much, Laura and Horatio. That was excellent. I'm so excited about this tool. And I can see I have a lot of things to learn if I'm going to be an administrator. But I'm very excited to try. And I'm so grateful for those of you that have already joined. Spread the word. And let's grow our little group and start sharing there and see what happens. I love the idea that we could actually follow up on different webinar topics and continue that conversation or continue you to share new resources that we find or things that have happened when we tried out new tools. So thank you very much. Um, upcoming shows, we've got some great ones coming up. Next week, we're going to have a fifth grade teacher who will be our featured teacher. His name is Ken Ehrman, and he is fantastic. Um, April 1st, we're going to have a great show with the mother-son team on digital citizenship from a kid's perspective. And they are the founders of DigSit Kids. Can't wait for that. April 8th, Adam Bello will be with us to share Breakout EDU. April 15th, no show, because that's the Easter holiday weekend for us here in the United States anyway. April 22nd, we have a special Common Sense Media show with Steve Garten, who will be sharing resources for digital citizenship and raising digital kids. And then on April 29th, we have a great show on creating video by Desiree Alexander. She's going to call it Not Your Grandmother's Video. So I hope you'll all plan to come back and join us every Saturday that you can. Thanks, Peggy.
The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest. He's gathered all his PD resources in one place, including host your own webinar. You can sign up for a Blackboard Collaborate session, and as long as your session is public, it's free. You can nominate a featured teacher by filling out this form or using the tab in the Live Binder. Uh, you can nominate yourself as a featured teacher for the month as well. The videos are all on iTunes U. When you exit the show, your browser should open the survey automatically. If not, you can take the link in the chat box or from the tab in the Live Binder. When you do complete the survey at the bottom, you can request a professional development certificate and it now prints out your name thanks to Patty Ruffing, who then also sends them out. Make sure this is a personal email address and not the schools because schools tend to block these from getting to you. Special thanks again to our special guests Laura Briggs and Horatio Ochoa and Blooms to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, the Blackboard Collaborate for a webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today, thanks so much for coming.